The past has left us with gigantic puzzles, and this is meant quite literally. In the distant past, our ancestors created colossal monumental buildings that inevitably raised the question, how was this even possible? How did people thousands of years ago manage to carve stone giants out of the ground that even our most modern construction machines would have despaired of? Could it be that the peoples of antiquity had more than the simple means and tools that are commonly attributed to them? Some alternative minds take these questions even further. Was it perhaps not the people who built the pyramids and the like? No matter where we turn our historical gaze, it seems that practically every corner of this world is adorned with architectural giants that leave us with a mixture of disbelief and admiration. And an ancient site in Turkey, which has always been overshadowed by huge question marks, proves that the ancient penchant for a megalomania did not begin with the era of the ancient Egyptians. Located in southeastern Anatolia, the roots of Gobekli Tepe go back at least 11,600 years, and massive T-pillars weighing between 8 and 10 tons lie dormant here. It is in the nature of things that the processing and placement of these massive loads required a high degree of knowledge and coordination, and yet a look beyond the archaeological horizon shows that it was always possible to go even bigger. Accordingly, Significantly more imposing structures were built in the following millennia, almost transforming the structures of Gobekli Tepe into puny Lego bricks. The Greeks, the Romans, the Maya, and the Incans have left us silent witnesses to time that still take our breath away today. But when it comes to the mystery of ancient gigantic structures, the ancient Egyptians are probably the prime example par excellence. And that doesn't just mean the famous pyramids of Giza. No, the statues, temples, and obelisks also leave many modern researchers largely baffled. A perplexity that is primarily due to the fact that the inhabitants of the Pharaonic Empire did not keep comprehensive records of their building techniques, which seems all the more puzzling when we remember that they otherwise recorded practically everything for posterity. In the absence of solid archaeological evidence, experts have no choice but to delve into the field of theories. So how could the Egyptians have moved their blocks of stone weighing tons, and how did they pile them up to create architectural masterpieces? Well, the conventional wisdom among researchers is that the fathers of the pyramids used boats to move the extreme loads from A to B. When it comes to transportation on land, they are said to have used large wooden sledges that were moved with the help of hundreds or even thousands of workers. At the actual ancient construction site, sophisticated ramp systems were then used, which allowed the individual components to be maneuvered upwards and assembled with unparalleled precision to form a monumental structure. In theory, these explanations sound quite conclusive. But in practice, most of the ancient Egyptian construction methods and tools disappeared into the oblivion of the past. But we should not forget one thing. Roman colossal buildings by no means needed to hide from their ancient Egyptian counterparts. In fact, the Romans used some of the largest known blocks of stone in their sites, and added a number of tantalizing entries to the list of archaeological mysteries. How did the Romans plan to move this 1,000-ton object? You have to think about it. Made in the quarry of Baalbek in present-day Lebanon, the so-called Stone of the Pregnant Woman is more than 20 meters long, around 5 meters wide, over 4 meters high, and weighs in, at the bottom line, the equivalent of almost 170 African elephants. In view of these extreme dimensions, the following is all the more astonishing. The two other monoliths found at the same site are even more massive. In detail, the weight of the nameless stones is put at 1,240, and 1,650 tons, respectively. And they embody no less than some of the largest man-made stones of all time. But why, and above all, how did the Romans want to transport these monsters from the quarry? And what ancient building project required such gigantic blocks? Well, when it comes to the question of the intended use, the experts are unanimous. The conventional wisdom is that the stone colossi were intended for the temple complex at Baalbek. No wonder, since the complex is known for its awe-inspiring giganticism anyway. It is home to some of the largest Roman buildings in the Middle East. Just take a look at the almost ridiculously large stones that form the foundations of the Temple of Jupiter. 
In the corresponding photos, the people in the foreground almost look like tiny ants. It is obvious that the Romans were able to move loaves of this size, but experts can only speculate about the transportation of the megaliths mentioned above. And this despite the fact that there is actually a historical source that provides a deep insight into the secrets of Roman architecture. The Roman military technician and engineer, Marcus Vitruvius, bequeathed the collective work De Architura Libri Decim to posterity. As the only surviving work of architectural theory from antiquity, the Ten Books on Architecture, reveal the background to temples, houses, and cities. At the same time, we also know of several contemporary depictions that show how the Romans used constructions made of winches, hoists, and cranes to realize their ambitious building projects. In the case of particularly large blocks, the theory goes, they may have used several cranes at the same time. In terms of transportation, however, historians point to rollers or sledges. But wouldn't these have instantly broke under the sheer weight of the pregnant woman's stone or sunk into the sandy ground? Well, that's not far-fetched. Despite this, the experts emphasize that even hundreds of years ago, it was perfectly possible to transport extremely large stones over long distances without the use of lost technologies or extraterrestrial aids, mind you. The obelisk in St. Peter's Square, which was moved to its new location in 1586 with the help of 900 workers, 150 horses, and 47 winches, is often cited in this regard. However, it should perhaps be noted at this point that the rose granite monolith only weighs 320 tons and is therefore almost 700 tons lighter than the stone of the pregnant woman. Well, perhaps this is precisely the reason why the stone colossi still lie dormant in the Baalbek quarry and do not adorn an overwhelming monumental temple. The Romans had to admit to themselves that they had overreached themselves and left unfinished business. Do the buildings of antiquity bear witness to an unbelievable truth? Now there is a, well, slightly more alternative camp that is not quite so easily fobbed off with this answer. The idea that the Romans dramatically misjudged their building project simply doesn't seem plausible. The idea that our ancient ancestors were regularly visited by aliens would be a little more plausible. Where the theories of ramps and sheer muscle power have had their day, extraterrestrial beings come into play, who were worshipped as supernatural deities by the inhabitants of Earth. In return, the exotic visitors revealed advanced technologies to humans, which made the creation of the monumental buildings possible in the first place. But what kind of technologies were these? Well, even in the alternative scene, this is not clear. But the bottom line is that the consensus is that they functioned very differently from our modern machines. There is sometimes talk of implosions and the power of sound. For example, the tradition that the Egyptian priests sang while building the pyramids is interpreted to mean that the blocks, which weighed tons, were moved with the help of acoustics. But how much truth is there in these unusual theories? Couldn't the gigantic loads have been moved and worked in a way that doesn't shatter our conventional view of history? Well, to get to the bottom of this question, a research team decided without further ado to put the matter to a practical test. A few years ago in Massachusetts, the participants set themselves the task of lifting a granite obelisk that the sculptor, Rick Brown, had made especially for this purpose. In detail, the researchers used a construction made of a ramp and sand, and while the sand was gradually removed, the obelisk slowly lowered into its intended position. And lo and behold, this simple yet clever method proved to be extremely effective. In the end, the men and women also managed to overcome the final inclination of 15 degrees using pure muscle power and to raise the obelisk completely. However, another modern experiment shows that the Romans and Egyptians at least needed a lot of patience to maneuver their oversized components from A to B. In 2012, the Los Angeles County Museum of Art produced an installation that goes by the name of Levitated Mass. While the free-floating mass weighs a considerable 340 tons, the first task was to bring the 6.55-meter-high boulder from the Jaruper Valley Quarry 170 kilometers away to L.A. And to accomplish this, a specifically designed truck had to be built around the stone monster. And here's the thing, 
The vehicle was 80 meters long, 9.75 meters wide, and had 196 wheels. During transportation, the XXL truck crept along the road at 6 kilometers an hour. In total, the transfer took 11 night drives and $10 million. The press described the operation as the largest of its kind since the construction of the Egyptian pyramids. However, the ancient Egyptians would probably have been happy if they had only had to bridge 170 kilometers. Some of the blocks that adorn the Giza Plateau came from a quarry 800 kilometers away. Your journey to the subscription button is much shorter. Join our community now and never miss an exciting video from us again.